Hello, friends. Let's react to this question by one of our subscribers. It's very important to join us actively because you are going to learn how best to solve cubic equations. Okay. Now, when you talk about cubic equation, you talk about polynomial and cubic equation in particular. Cubic means that the highest power of the unknown is always three. So each time you see something that has the highest power to be three in this form, we say it is a cubic and this one is an equation because of this equal sign. Now to solve this equation, there are a lot of methods you can use, but one of the methods I want to show you, which is the best is how to use the factor and the division method. Okay. The factor theorem. Remember the factor theorem says that if you have a function, let's say if you have a function of X, then whenever you substitute the value of X into the function and it becomes equal to zero, it means that that value you substituted, supposing we substituted A here as a value of X, it means that X minus A is going to be a what? A factor. Now let's see how to do it here. But remember in this, we don't know any value yet. So what we need to do is we are going to get the factors of this number 130. Okay, so let's list the factors in such a way that let's list the factors of this. The numbers that can divide 130, both the positive and negative, you know, one is a universal factor. You can also have plus or minus two. You can also have plus or minus three. You can also have plus or minus five. Okay. And so many of them. Now, these are some of the factors of this. If you, are, if you plug in any of these factors, just like this A, into this, and it becomes equal to zero. Remember, what, what we want to target is not because of this zero here, but we want to know if we plug in the value of this P, let's say we pick one of these as a value of P and plug it into this part of the equation, into the left side, and whatever we get there becomes zero. Not because of this zero. We say that that value is a what? A factor. So let's put, we are going to use our trial error method, okay? Just put your XP as one. If you put P as one, you know, putting P as one here cannot make this to be equal to zero. Let's still see to that. This is one cube plus you have one. This is minus 130. So you see one cube plus this is one. Okay. And one minus this is not closer to zero. So it's not equal to zero. If you also do same for negative, you will still notice that this is what you have. Okay, and you will still notice that this is not also closer to zero. So none of this is factor for one. So you can also do the same for two, do same for three and the rest of them. Now, looking at this, let's see, let's try from when P is five. Okay, let's check from when P is five. For when P is five, what do you do? Put the value of P here. So we're having five cubed plus five then minus 130. Let's see if it will give us zero. In that case, we are going to have five cube is five times five times five to give us 125, then plus five minus 130. If you add this together, it gives you 130 minus 130, and that is equal to zero. So what it means is that if we have put in the value of P as five, it means that this becomes the root. Okay, so let's make it a factor. If you're making it a factor, we're going to have it that you are going to, because this is positive, take it to the left side. So we're going to have P, it will now be P minus five, which will now become the what? The factor. And what does it mean? It means that if P minus five is a factor, if you use it to divide this cubic, it will not give you what? A remainder. I hope you know what you meant by factor now. So in that case, since we know this, let's use it now to divide this particular equation. Remember, what we are dividing is still the expression, okay? From there, we can now solve the equation. So let's put in. So in that case, we are going to divide, and we are using the long division method. This is what we have, okay? We are dividing with P minus 5. So what is the rule of this division? It's DMS. You divide, you multiply you subtract. So let's go first to first, but when you are multiplying, you multiply the both. Okay. 
use the first term in division in multiplying you multiply everything so p divides p cube we give us p squared so we have p squared then let's go to multiplying p squared multiplies p is p cube use it to multiply negative five it gives you negative five p squared the next is to subtract okay you are subtracting p cube minus p cube is zero now what about p square you see there's nothing for p square here so what you need to do is you can adjust this adjust this so that you now include p square but it's going to be zero p squared showing that the p has a quotient of because zero p squared simply means zero did you get it it's just for us to subtract this okay then add up your p and your minus 130. so let's subtract again this minus you now have zero minus minus five which is zero plus five so we're going to have five p squared then you bring down p okay you bring this down now we are going to repeat this again dms so we have p we divide 5p and when it divides it gives you 5p okay multiply this we are having 5p squared use this to multiply this it gives you negative 25p then you also subtract this minus this is zero then we have this is p which is 1p so we have 1p minus minus 25p you see this will be positive now so we're going to add up to give us 26p okay so we're having now bring this down so we have negative 130 so you repeat the cycle again when you are done subtracting you start again from division so p will divide this to give us 26 use 26 to multiply you have 26p use this to multiply this is going to give us negative 130 then you subtract you see subtract this you are going to have zero so you see why we said that this is a factor okay now that you've gotten this so what this means is that we are going to now have this is the same as this is going to give us p minus five and this quotient we got here which is p squared plus five p plus 26 these two things, when you multiply it, it gives you this, and that will be equal to zero. Did you see it now? So in this case now, it means that P minus five is equal to zero, or P squared plus five P plus 26 is equal to zero. To find P here, add five to both sides. So we have P is equal to add five here, and also add five here. This we cancel, this will give us five. So P as five, which we've already said it earlier, okay? Now the next is this. This has led you to quadratic. So you're going to solve this quadratically using any method. So we're going to use formula method, which says that P is going to be negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. Remember, the general quadratic equation says A squared plus b squared plus c equal to zero okay so what it means is if you equate this to be this you will notice that your a is the coefficient of your p squared so we are going to have it that our a is one because what you plug in here are these values do you see it you don't plug variable into the formula so you now see your b is the coefficient of p which means that our b is five and our c is the constant which is what 26 so let's plug this into this formula. To do that, we are going to now have, so if you plug them in, we are having now, this will give us P is negative, our B is five, so it will be negative five plus or minus square root of, B is still five, so we have five squared minus four, multiply A is one and C is 26, all over two multiply one. So we simplify. P will give us negative 5 plus or minus square root of 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. If you multiply this, you are going to have negative 104. Okay, so all over, multiply this, you have 2. 
So let's simplify again. This is giving us P as negative 5 plus or minus. If you subtract this, we are going to have a, this is going to give us square root of negative 79. I hope this is cleared all over 2. Now you see there is a negative sign inside the square root. And each time you have a negative sign inside the square root, that value is no longer a real number because no real numbers can be can have negative inside a square root. It means this cannot be seen on a number line. So what we do is it has become a complex number. So what we are going to do is to simplify this to now have, this will give us negative five plus or minus. Now in complex world, whenever you have in this negative, if you want to factor it out, if you want to bring it out, it becomes what I. Did you see that? To remove the negative, you use imaginary unit, which is I. So in that case, you are going to have I, then you will not be left with 79. Did you see it? All over 2. So in that case now, we are saying that our P is negative 5 plus I. 79 cannot be reduced again. It's a prime sword. So we have this all over 2 or then P is equal to negative 5. You take the negative value, I square root of 79 all over 2. These are the values of P for the complex and for the real, our P is equal to 5. And I hope this met you well. Let's know how much in the comment section. Remember, you can ask questions for clarity. If this tutorial helps you, please help us to share it and also subscribe for the more. I will see you in our next class. Then bye-bye.